Days always roll and the wind never stops Now this is our town, baby, you and me It takes a little time, but soon you will see We got clothes on the line, blowing in the breeze The kids on the wharf skipping rocks in the sea The people are friendly and the children are free Yeah, our little town is just heaven to me sound young boys driving their dad's car around we got the prettiest girls walking around soon they'll be leaving this old town we got so many leaving yeah chasing their dreams say there's nothing here or so it seems and they will miss it someday they'll know they'll want to return to the town they love so Good evening. Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include Mitten Tree Update, Interview with Con Dunford and George Eret, Lions Radio Bingo, These Stories plus the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. Communication is the beginning of understanding, and understanding is the basis for problem solving. USC Canada believes communication should know no borders. A farmer's field in Ethiopia offers innovation for old problems in Nepal. A community seed bank in Bangladesh sparks ideas for one in Mali. All over the developing world, Canadians in global partnership finding solutions that work. Each year, the Anglican Church collects knitted items for refugees and immigrants coming to Canada. Each year, the Anglican Church always receives a letter once the items have been received. This year was no different. This year, most of the knitted items went to refugees from Africa and South America who were more than happy to accept them. Some of the mittens and socks will go to a community center where they run an after-school program for underprivileged children. The Church of the Advent is now a Pentecostal church. However, they were quite happy to let the Refugee Center remain. The Advent Refugee Center thanks everyone for thinking of them each year and sending the beautiful and made items. It is a pleasure to receive them and to think of the loving care which went into them. All who work at the Refugee Center sends best wishes for a new year. On Thursday of this week, we had an interview with Con Dumford and George Ayrett about the upcoming All Newfoundland Dart Tournament being hosted here in Burgio. Today in our studio, we have with us Con Dumford and George Ayrett, and they're with the All Newfoundland Dart League, and they're here to talk about an upcoming tournament. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, this is a big tournament, I think, Con, and this uh, tournament is going to be Bay St. George, Southwest 
trying to find a uh, representative for the All Newfoundland Dirt Tournament. And this tournament is, is divided into sections, right? Right, yes. And we, Burgio, will be hosting a tournament on March the 4th and the 5th for the B Division. B Division, yes. Okay. Right. Now, uh, can you explain how that works? Well, the tournament, um, for example. Um, you had a B. Uh, this year we got teams coming down here from Edgerton, Jeffries, Flat Bay, Port of Port, Piccadilly. St. George's, Stephenville Crossing, Stephenville, Lords, and Virgil. Okay. We're, we are hosting the B Division. Okay. Uh, now, like, uh, the, we were talking earlier, and we were talking about the different divisions. The, we got uh, A, B, C, and D, and determines, your average determines which division you're in, right? Yes. Okay, so virgil has got a B Division, no, a C, yeah, a B, B division B. and a C division? A B and a C. Okay, yes. so what kind of averages would a C division have, a B division have? That's, that's the one we're talking about first. The, the B, the average is from 1850 to eight, uh, at 20.49. Okay, so for me who don't know anything about dirt, uh, is that um, really good players or uh, fair players or... That's pretty good players. That's pretty good players. Okay. Uh, if you're uh, if you're over a twenty point fifty and above, uh, you're a hay player. Okay. Now, we used to have uh, probably two or three hay players in Virgil at one time, but okay. right now we're we I say we don't got none. Okay. And so B is the next in line, and that's where probably half of our dirt players okay. are in the B and C. And C. And okay. the C, the average is from 1650 up to 1849. Okay. And that's like an average dart player for this community anyway. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I guess D would be the, the top-notch people. Yes. The, 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 what you would call really, really good dart players. Yeah. Okay. You? Okay. Um, now, uh, Burjo is going to be involved with, now we were talking earlier too about this one that's coming out on March the 4th and the 5th, that's for the B division. Were you saying that there's the team going out earlier for a dirt tournament as well? For the C, for the C division. For the C division, okay. They're going to either then on the 17th and the 18th? 18, 19. 18, 19 of March. Okay. Uh, February. February. Next yeah. weekend. Next weekend, okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, is this, um, this the first time that Burgio has hosted a All Newfoundland dirt tournament? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. We've been traveling, like, we've been up to St. George's a couple of times, uh, Stephenville. We're in uh, Piccadilly, Lourdes. Uh, that's about it, I think. Okay. We traveled up for like five, six years, and and uh, after some talking and, and negotiating with all those guys, we got into the rotation. Okay. So after we got in rotation, then... Uh, the ten communities, we we started off on the bottom and and worked our way up, and now we're to the point where we can host. Where you can it's host. our turn to host now. Wow! So um, you did name off the, I believe you named off the communities already that was involved. Like how many people are we talking about, approximately? Well, most uh, most teams carries uh, seven to eight players. Okay. okay. So, all right. If we can get like. I'm expecting maybe uh, eight teams to come down here. Okay. Some people got problems traveling this time of year and things like that, right? They got issues with Virgin Road, whatever. Sure, yeah. So the, uh, we're probably going to get eight teams. Okay. And but we may have two from Virgil. Oh, excellent. Like the, the B team, it is a B tournament. Yeah. But the C team that plays in Edgerton, they might join up and play in the B tournament as well. Okay, okay. Excellent. Um, so, but like, although you've got eight, t eight teams coming down and there's, say, seven to eight players on each team, they might also involve uh, spouses or friends or other mm -hmm. dark players who may just be interested, right? So there could be quite a crowd here. You could have 80 to 100 people. Wow. Easy, easy enough. Yeah. Um, now, do you have sponsors for this tournament? Yeah, uh, actually, the, the Lions Club is the host center. Okay. They are the sponsors, and they're the ones that's hosting this tournament, the oh. B tournament. Okay. 
and uh, Molson, and well, of course, the local guy, Brian Mead, yeah. they are our sponsor. A corporate sponsor? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, now, when will your tournament start? We know this is on uh, March the 4th and 5th, but like, what times of the day are we talking about? Uh, Saturday it starts uh, 11 o'clock. In the uh, morning? In the morning. Okay. Starts 11 o'clock in the morning due to the teams traveling in. Okay. We give them a chance to get down there and get a little rest maybe before we start playing. But anyway, we're scheduled to start at 11. And we'll probably run on until, uh, I'm guessing, maybe 8, 9 o'clock that okay. night. Okay. Because we got to play a round robin against the number of teams comes in determines how many games we're going to play. Okay. We play five games against all the teams that's coming in. Okay. All right. Well, five that's games quite a few. That's a quite a number of good art games then. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. quite a marathon. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. Well, yeah. basically we're playing all day Saturday and... Uh, and into Saturday night for maybe a couple of hours, I guess, and then pick it up Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay. And follow through, uh, I'd say, by 4 o'clock in Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. The round robin should be over and go into the playoffs. The top four teams goes into a playoff. Okay. And the champion that comes out of that would represent the Southwest uh Go to the Olive Land to represent Southwest. And they are are they also divided up into divisions, divisions. A, yes. B, C, and D. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the the winner of this tournament, Erin Burgio, would be the champion of the B division in the Southwest area. They would go somewhere else and play all the other teams in Newfoundland B divisions. Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. To try to get the B uh, all Newfoundland B champion. B, B champions. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Um, now you talked about that you're going to be uh, playing darts all day. Is there a break there anywhere, like for lunch or? Well, the Lions Club is going to have their canteen open, okay. so there's going to be uh, soup, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, okay. hamburgers so, that you can buy at okay. the canteen as well. So if your if your team is not playing, well, you can you can go and have a lunch, lunch too okay. as well. All right. And somewhere uh, along the way, I think there's normally a boy in between, so would you get a fair size break in a way. Okay, perfect. And all this is going to be taking at, at place at the community center? At the community center. Is this going to be open to pe people from the public to come and see? Definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. We're inviting everybody to come out and watch. Okay. Um, now, since we're the host, I'm assuming that um, the DART team is going to probably need some help from people in the community for whatever? We're going to be looking for volunteers for referees, uh, score uh, checkers, taking the score, marking down the scores, and taking off the scores. Okay. Um, now, if someone hears this now, and obviously I'm assuming that it would have to be somebody who's familiar with darts. Yes. It yes. wouldn't, like me, I have no idea about... But basically. you could do a job like to be a back checker, mark okay. it down, you know, because all you just do is take a pin and when the scorekeeper calls it to score, all you do is mark it down. Okay. All right. So you don't even have to know anything about darts to be escorted okay. for a checker, right? So how many people are you looking to need? Like, how many are you asking for to volunteer? I'd say we'd be, we're probably going to be needing 20, I think, eh? Because mm -hmm. there's two, there's possible six boards being used. Okay. And you need two on each board. Okay. So that's 12. Yeah. And, and... We wouldn't expect anybody to stay there all day. Okay, so that would be kind of like shift so work. Yes. Like shift okay. work. So the more Maybe. volunteers we get, the better, you know, yeah. we could it make up a schedule different. and schedule people in. Okay, so if somebody out there is interested in that, uh, who do they contact? Contact me or yeah. George. Okay, so I guess your your phone number's now. Everybody knows me. No, Why, well, yeah, everybody knows and George. And everybody knows George, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> your name is in the book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did we miss anything? Is there anything else you'd like to well, hit? Well, the uh, the C division is going to it uh, then uh, next weekend. Uh, Con probably can give you a name, a list of the names of the people that are going to be okay. in to represent the C division. Yeah. Okay. Actually, well, we're doing a lot of talking about the B because but that's we're, where we're because old we're old snare and Virgil, I guess, yeah. and the reason for that. So I might uh, just uh, mention the B team first, and uh, our B team is. Uh, Con Dunford, George Ayrt, Eugene Ball, Liz Escott, 
Sid Ingram, Clayton Ayer, and Everett Anderson. Okay. That's our B team. Now, yeah. the team going out to Edgerton, the, the C team, uh, that would be Dave McDonald, Max Strickland, Rodney Sims, Don Sims, George Anderson, Ralph Dunford, Brent Porter, and I'll be going with them as uh, a non-playing captain. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I just thought another thought just came. Now, we're talking about the B division. Burju is hosting the B division. Would in the rotation, like you said, you started at the bottom of the scale, would in that rotation, will Burjo ever get a chance to host the C division? Oh, yes. Yeah. So when yes. that time comes, we could be doing this again for yes. the C division. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Actually, the the way the way it's set up, we when we start the rotation, we we're supposed to start in the D. Okay. Which will have been last year, but we don't have a D team. We've never sent a D team out. Okay. And you've got to send a, a team two years in a row in order to qualify to host. Oh, okay. So All since right. we didn't have a D team. We yeah. lost that opportunity to host. Okay. Now we have had a B and a C for the last, well, B for the last five years, six years maybe, and the C team for the last two or three. So oh, okay. next year, uh, I'm pretty sure next year or the year after, we will be hosting the C. Okay. C division play down, right? Play down. And mm -hmm. it's called a play down, not playoffs. Like, yeah, yeah. well, as a. Is what they call it play down because you play everybody that comes in yeah. for the tournament and the winner goes to the all new land playoff. Yeah, okay. Right? More or less. All right. Interesting terminology in all this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ken, you were you were saying about your uh, C division, you're they're going to Heather's and I believe we named them. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I guess uh, probably uh, We'd like to thank our sponsors for sure, and that, that would be the Lions Club for Olsen the Bee, and Molson Group, and Brian Mead, and the business that helped us out so far, we had some help along the way uh, with our fundraisers, okay, good. and Highway Diner, uh, Food Lane, Spencer Store, Variety Quick Shop, Sea View Lounge, and the Red and White Store. Okay. They helped us out along the way with the fundraising and we will be having another maybe a couple more fundraisers so if anybody out there would like to help us out a bit with a donation I'm sure we'll welcome that. I'm sure you will. Because there's a fair amount of expenses involved with traveling, <coughs> hotels, meals, and this sort of thing you know for two or three days. Okay so you guys like uh, as in uh, I'm talking about the All Newfoundland Dart League L offset the cost for people traveling. Yes. Okay. Well, like our C team, we'd like you know try to raise a little oh, bit of money to help them with their with their expenses. Okay, very good. Because the registration fees involved with these teams too to pay to the uh, the Western Division, is it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that is going to be on uh, March the fifth. This uh, tournament. So we'd like to encourage everybody to get out and uh, and support Burjo and cheer them on, and hopefully they'll win. Get a win. <laughs> I'm sure. So, do you feel that you have a good team? Most oh, definitely. for sure, yeah. yeah. We, we, came, we came, came within a whisker last year winning it. So we're home this year with our own, own fans. I think we'll, we'll do it. And on your own dartboards, too. That's right. That's where you play, too, is at the community center, anyway, that's right? right? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, well, thanks very much for dropping by. And anything else that we can do to help, just let us know. We Thank you very Thank much. You. VOCM Lions Radio Bingo as a new promotion. The Lions Radio Bingo is an ongoing for some time now. VOCM are offering an on-air promo promotion on their radio stations. During the promotion, the stations will be giving away radio bonus cards to their listeners. The Burgio Lions Club will also be giving away radio bingo cards. During their regular Tuesday night bingo at the community center, there will be a draw for one radio bingo card. The radio bingo cards are available each week at the local Foodland store for $2.50. Each time you buy a radio bingo card, you are making it possible for the Lions Club to meet their commitments to this province's children's charities. Radio Bingo airs on each Saturday at 6 p.m. on VOCM. 
Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review coming up after this. to me So just keep giving whatever you're giving Cause even when you're giving just a little If you're doing just a little you're helping a lot It helps a lot From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints It helps a lot On Wednesday and Thursday of this week workers were out by the post office looking for oil this large blue truck was in the area of the Federal Building on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. The workers were checking the oil tanks underneath the post office. For years, the Federal Building has had its oil tank under the building. Workers drill down and take oil and water samples to make sure there has been no oil leaks under the building. This machine is used to drill the O's. On their last visit, they drilled O's until they hit rock, then a pipe was put in place. Water and soil samples are then taken from the wells on a regular basis to check for oil contamination. Since their last visit, a trace of oil was found and now the workers are taking more samples as a precautionary measure. February is Violence Prevention Month. To help educate individuals about the issue, the ELP Committee has placed on Community Channel 10 tips on violence awareness. They have also included internet safety tips in the Senior Eye Report Cards which will be sent home on Monday, February the 13th. Throughout the month, videos sponsored by the ELP Committee will be aired on Community Channel 10 to help highlight some of the important issues. A display is set up in the main lobby of the Calder Health Care Center with many pamphlets and information sheets on these topics. Please feel free to take any that may be of interest to you. Plans are being made to have a community feud sometime in March. If you have any questions, concerns, or would like more information on violence prevention, please call a representative of the ELP Committee. This week at Burgio Academy, the teachers and staff were honored in many different ways for the Teacher Staff Appreciation Week. Teacher Staff Appreciation Week was from February the 6th to February the 10th. The school was decorated in honor of the event. The staff room was decorated with balloons, streamers, and hearts with messages written on them. The front door to the school, the main office, and the display case all had messages for the Teacher Staff Appreciation Week. The respect team had puddings for each member of the staff with a little tag that read, Thanks for putting up with us. The student council gave out mints and CDs of the teachers' favorite songs. The teachers and staff were asked what their favorite song was, and each morning one of the songs is played and dedicated to that teacher or staff member. Each staff member also had an individual art displayed throughout the school with positive remarks written by the students. Each day, snacks were brought to the staff room. All these snacks were donated by members of the community. All this week, the teachers were relieved of their recess duties while volunteers filled in for them. In the downstairs hallway, there is a very interesting bulletin board. It is called, Can You Name That Ann? There are pictures of each of the staff members' Ann, and you had to match the hand with the staff member. There was also a Do You Know What the Staff and Teachers Said contest. The teachers listed their favorite expressions, beverages, and color, and everyone was challenged to figure out who said what. On Wednesday, the students were encouraged, encouraged to dress as teachers, and the teachers were encouraged to dress as students. Teacher staff survival kits were also distributed. Principal of the school, Corey Penny, and Vice Principal Ruth Tucker organized a teacher social with a card game, food, and prize draws. On Friday, a potluck was organized for the staff at lunchtime. An assembly by student council was held in the afternoon to end the week-long event. Stay with us for Off the Rack and the BBS Playbill, all after this. 
It takes community to heal a village. In northern Mali, USC Canada works with local partners to find community-based ways to ensure mother-child health, food security, and jobs. Canadian agencies are helping to renew and strengthen communities throughout the developing world. This means greater opportunities for global villagers. Canadians in partnership, finding solutions that work. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of a caribou in the Bags Brook area. Let's look back to February the 11th, 1996. BBS Playbill. Tune in on Tuesday for a video entitled The Crown Prince from the Elk Committee. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing LOBA TV Bingo. Join Pansy and the gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.